Would you like to make a million dollars? Develop a self-cleaning barrel or better yet, a bullet jacket material that doesn't foul. You bet, we're talking about cleaning and it's very important in order to get maximum accuracy and performance from the rifle that we properly clean the rifle. We're gonna show you a technique that we feel is proper for cleaning the rifle for all of your center fire, big game hunting and varmint rifles. You're gonna need a good bore guide and bore guides are made out of nylon. They have a rubber O-ring seal in the front to keep the solvents from seeping back in the chamber. Anytime that we clean the gun, we're using now this <coughs> little case guard by the folks at MTM. You'll notice that the muzzle of the rifle barrel is pointed down, allowing the solvents to run out of the end of the barrel. Remove the bolt from the rifle, slip our bore guide in and push it forward until you can feel that O-ring seal inside the chamber and this will prevent the solvents from leaking back into the action area. If you have the scope caps, now's a good time to put those in place. We don't want to get these harsh ammonia-based solvents on the lenses of our rifle scope. We've spent a small fortune for good optics on the rifle. We want to protect those lenses and lens coatings as best we can. You're going to need a good one-piece cleaning rod. We recommend the rods from the folks at Bortec. They're an excellent straight rod that has a plastic polymer type coating on the outside to keep from scratching the end of the bore. They also have a really nice ball bearing handle that's man sized so as you're pushing the rod back and forth you've got a good area to grip. Always use good copper bronze brushes. Never use a stainless steel brush when cleaning a rifle. Some of the new nylon brushes that are out there are also a good idea as they will help oxygenate the solvents to help better cleaning action inside the bore. But it's hard to beat a good copper phosphorus bronze brush. In the ammonia type solvents, we recommend the Barnes CR10 for an ammonia based solvent. This is really hard to beat. If you're looking for a non ammonia based solvent, Holland's Witch's Brew is probably one of the finest carbon and copper removers that you can buy. Anytime that we clean a barrel, after we've cleaned it, it's important that we apply some type of protective bore conditioner, if you will, to the inside of the barrel to keep it from rusting if it is a chromoly based barrel, and also to provide a little bit of lubricity for that first bullet going down the barrel. Hollins makes what they call their barrel break-in fluid or bore lube, and that's a great product to do that. <clears throat> also, for the back of your locking lugs, we make specialty tins of lug compound and anti-seize compound. They are also available in our handy syringe models, which gives you an easy applicator, but we'll show you that when we finish up with a cleaning task. All right, first, I like to use a cleaning rod, and I use two cleaning rods, one that has the brush and one that has the patch on it, or patch jag, and we're gonna start off by using our patch and putting a little bit of solvent on it and pushing it down the bore initially. Always keep the solvent off your hands, sprinkle a little bit of your CR10 onto the patch. And push it down the bore. This gives us a little bit of solvent in the bore now. Once we push that wet patch of solvent through the bore, now it's time to start with a little more elbow grease. And again, apply some of our CR10 solvent to the brush. You can see that we've put a little white cleaning rag on the back of the stock. This keeps the solvents from getting on that nice finish or paint job on the back of our stocks. We've also machined a nice little nylon bushing that fits into the backside of our bore guide and this further helps align the rod to keep it from porpoising down the bore. Nice slow deliberate strokes, we don't want to get in a hurry. Push it down to the end, retract the rod, that is one stroke. Okay, we often hear the adage of one stroke for every shot, that's an old wives tale. We clean the barrel until it's clean and this usually requires 70 to 80 strokes using a good ammonia based solvent. Every 10 strokes or so, add more solvent to the end of the brush. We need to have plenty of solvent in the bore when we're cleaning. Okay, don't be dry brushing the bore. Nice, slow, deliberate, straight strokes. You can kind of watch as the rod breaks out through the end of the barrel there. Just as it breaks out, when we get ready to retract the rod, we want to retract it nice and slow. We don't want to jerk it back into the barrel. We want to allow the cleaning brush to center itself coming back in the bore so we don't do any damage to the crown of our rifle. This is especially important if we're dealing with a bench rest or a highly accurate varmint rifle. 
Okay, we're about to complete our 70 to 80 strokes, adding more solvent every 10 strokes. Okay, we're gonna use nice, slow, deliberate strokes for 70 to 80 strokes. Once we've completed our 70 to 80 strokes, remove the cleaning rod. We're gonna use our rag and always get in the habit of wiping the rod down. We don't wanna have any grit or debris on the cleaning rod, which may become embedded and further score the inside of the barrel. Then we'll use our patching jag to patch out all the solvent and debris that is inside the barrel. Now a neat little tip, you'll see that I'm using extra large patches and by placing my jag around the periphery of the patch, I can adjust the tension of pushing the patch through the bore. So that way we've got one size patch that can do several different calibers. So we're simply gonna punch it off center we're now ready with a nice, slow, deliberate stroke to push that patch through the barrel. Okay, you can see that we've got a lot of bluish uh, colored staining on the patch. This is a chemical reaction that occurs between the solvent and the copper. You wanna have a patch that when we're done cleaning comes out nice and clean, indicating that there is no more copper left inside the bore. Always get in the habit of removing the little threads from the patches. We don't want to have a thread on the inside of the barrel when we shoot it. Always retract the rod nice and slow in the patching operation so we don't score or scar the inside of the barrel from careless cleaning rod technique. Okay, once we have the barrel clean, our patches are coming out nice and clean. Now we're ready to add some type of a lubricant to the bore. With a nice clean patch, we recommend a little bit of the Holland Bore Lube. Shake it up. And just apply a couple little drops around the edge of the patch. It doesn't require much. We just want a real thin microscopic film of lubrication in the bore to protect the bore from rusting and provide a little bit of lubrication for that first bullet down the barrel. We don't wanna be shooting a bullet down a bone dry bore. This can raise pressures of the cartridge depending upon how hot of ammunition that we're shooting through that particular rifle. Okay, you don't want a sopping wet patch. As we mentioned earlier, just a real thin film is all that's required if you're using a chromoly based barrel that are really prone to rusting, it's a real good idea to put a piece of black electrical tape over the end of the muzzle to keep rain and snow out if you're hunting under harsh field conditions. Okay, that pretty well covers the brushing technique of getting the barrel clean. Next month, we're going to show you the proper techniques of lug maintenance, where to apply your anti-seize compounds, as well as a lubricant in the caulking cam for smooth caulking of the rifle. I'm Daryl Holland for AGI, and I'll see you next month with another tip.